All right, let's talk about CSS Grid some more. You can actually make some really cool things with CSS Grid. So I'm going to use this basic image gallery to demonstrate some of this. Right now, I've got it set up so that there's two columns, two rows, four images. I've got four list items. Each one of them's got a different image in it. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this up. So I'm going to increase this to say that I've got six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two empty cells right here at the end because I've only got four images. But I'm going to take the images and I'm going to make the first one go two by two, the, the uh, third one go two by two in the bottom corner here, then another one in the middle going even larger and being underneath the corners of the first and the last one. So, and then the last one I'm going to put in the middle and I'm going to kind of stack it up in an interesting way. So we're going to look at grid column. With the grid column, we can specify where we want to start, how much we want to spend, or where we want to stop, start and where we want to stop. So I'm going to say for the first one that I want one, and then I'm going to span two. Same thing for the second one. Grid column, except this one's going to start in the column three. So this is the first two, and then the third column. So column three, span two. And this one will come down here. We'll say grid column. And the, the ones that I'm picking to do this with doesn't really matter. I can choose any one of them and place them anywhere I want using grid column and grid row. So we'll say and five slash span two as well. Okay, so they're spaced out, filling up the entire width. Now I'm going to shift them down. So this last one, I'm going to say grid row, and I want it to fill rows five and six. So I've shifted it down here, and we'll say span two. Grid row, starting in one, spanning two. So it was already doing that. And now we're going to push this one down by saying grid row starting in three, span two. Okay, so now I've got them staggered here. This fourth one's just sitting where it normally would, the first place that's available because I haven't done anything else with it. But I'm gonna take number two and I wanna expand this. I wanna make it grow so that it's underneath the edge of number three and underneath the edge of number one, taking up four of the six columns and four of the six rows. So we'll move back one column. So starting in column two instead of three, and we're gonna span four, and the grid row, I'm gonna be starting in row two, spanning four. There we are. Now, it's stacked in the order that they're written in the HTML, first, second, and third. What I want to do is I want to put this one in behind, so I'm just going to take number one and I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to increase its Z index. Uh, just anything higher is going to work here. So we've got this nice little staggered effect like this. And then number four, I'm going to position it right in the middle here. I'm going to put it where two was originally before we expanded it. So grid column. Column one, column two, column three, and row one, two, three. So three, span two, grid row, same thing. Three, span two. Okay, so number four is sitting on top of here, and then we can also play with it. We can do other things. We can do a transform. Let's rotate it, negative 45 degrees. We can play with the opacity. Let's set it to 80%. So it's letting some of the other ones show through. So you can do lots of things that you want. Um, because of the way grid works, we can use these other properties like transform. So we can do transitions, transforms, uh, without having to do anything else to it. Um, yeah, so that's it. So you can create any sort of pattern you want. And it doesn't have to be equal measures here, too. You can change what the columns are. 
Like right now, it's one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. There's our six, but we can play around with this. We can make, you know, this one's going to be two, this one's going to be two, this one's going to be four, this one's going to be three. And you can end up getting different sizes for these guys just by playing around with the fractions that each of the columns and rows are going to get. You can set up grid template rows as well if you want to control things that way. Since I'm using images here, and my images are all square images, I really just want to put in the columns. My images will hold open the height, and I'll be able to calculate what the rows are that way. But just keep this in mind. You can overlap elements. You can create some very interesting layouts using CSS Grid. So I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If it helped, if you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.